that's MKLeo across from me. You already lost. Stop that. You're all champions. I love you all. I hope you all do well. As we get into the other side of Losers Quarters, we got a Brawlers matchup here. It's going to be on Smashville as we start things off here with Ness versus uh, Falco, piloted by two greats out from New York. I'm going to keep it a stack with you, AJ. This is about to be Mesh's paradise. You have two players that are constantly looking for their hit confirms. It's a big damage. Whether it's off of one straight bullet that's going to do something like potentially heal Chris, or you're going to bring yourself into a position where you're just right, finding that starter hit, and you're just hunting for a clip after that point. Exactly. The big thing about this matchup is Tilde wins off of their straight hits in center stage because uh, Ness wants to swing a lot as he's coming in on landing. Other end of it, Ness gets to win at ledge incredibly because your recovery is kind of poor. So it's very easy for him to regularly mix up uh, Tilde by using those PK fires and using those PK thunders. It's on Tilde to make sure he stays in center stage as often as possible, much like right now. Figuring out how far you can go off of one hit, I think is going to be a really big thing to learn for both of these players. Because if Tilde finds himself overextending, he's a spacey at the lunch. And that's never a good thing against the likes of Ness. Yep, that is it is a very, very annoying life at that. Good timing there, kind of holding down, waiting a little bit to make sure he makes up the timing on that down tilt. But he's one, he's one straight hit away. And when Tilde starts doing this, when he starts walking around, he's taking back the pace of the game. He knows that Ness wants to get in, so he's just waiting for him to put one bad aerial out, and then he's going to punish him for it. The problem is finding that one bad aerial, because typically, Chris, puts out something that prevents you from going into a space, or it's a down air that's gonna auto cancel into him dashing at you and finding a grab. Absolutely. You have to be very careful while you're on the hunt for PK Chris. And holding down on the up B there, and not even scared of the of the yo-yo. Oh yeah, yeah, get that reflector up because if you caught by it, you got caught by that, he's 100 percent hunting you for that down or off stage. Yeah, the laser's actually not done anything for Tilde so far besides take out Psy Magnet, and Psy Magnet itself has not gotten punished. Although I really like the down air auto cancel getting punished by forward air there by Tilde. He didn't get much off it, mm -hmm. but it shows his awareness for the buttons that are getting pressed. Exactly, and also it made it look like BM, but it's not. The way that Tilde has kind of started stepping forward to like get Bates out of PK Chris's approach have been really good. There's the dare. Now he's going to be forced to recover the ledge. He does have the jump still available, but PK Chris has had such a hard time getting in. That that time though <laughs> does not matter. Grabs like side magnet into grab shouldn't be a thing, but it is. And here we are with PK Chris getting himself back to an even game. Yeah, but the damage is far from reflecting that right now. And Tilde, once he's in the air, you know those forward airs are coming out. You know those nads are out, and you know a lead is oncoming for him. Absolutely. And now back to a nice, comfortable lead here from Tilde. It's all about holding center stage again. You want to make sure that you're consistently annoying PK Chris on approach. Now, actually, he's he went from pumping the brakes. Now he's going in. But see, now he's now he's gone in a bunch. All these short hop aerial option coverages from PK Chris using those spares, using those dares are working incredibly here as he's racking up this damage big time. You know, one thing we haven't brought up yet is the fact that Game 1 is finding ourselves on Smashville, a very small stage where both of these characters can find a lot of their combo starters off of a counter hit on that platform. They can camp beneath it to anti-air extremely well, and they can play very aggressively. Hangman, I said it at the beginning. You don't listen to me. I thought we were talk about I it. I thought we were friends. You gotta talk about it. You gotta <laughs> let the people know. I did. What? It's not enough that we're on Smashville. Why is it a big deal that Chat, we're on I Smashville? Chat, I caught him in 4K. He doesn't believe in me. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to let the people know it's what happens when a Falco on Smashville is sitting under that True platform. True enough. Because this has been Tilde Smashville. That's the mayor right there. Uh, oh, hey, actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, Falco just belongs here in Animal Crossing anyways. Also, shouts to, to KK Slider, who's just vibing in the background right now. Uh, going for the up B straight to the ledge. This is actually still super scary here for Tilde because one good straight hit up air, as he's looking for right now on a jump read, will kill him. And a back throw will kill him as he slowly works his way with this lead. It's actually not looking too bad. PK Chris can definitely run it back. Oh, oh there we go. Neutral get up. Worst option you could have picked is Tilde because it brings you right into the yo yo. And now Chris finds the proper combo starter. He could tie up that damage. But that's asking a lot of him as Tilde's on the hunt to take this game one, but he's not going to do it yet. Not just yet. PK Flash is a reversal option. Two of them at that, but he's going to have to go super low, trying to find a two-frame there with the down smash. As I recall, somebody said he'll never get those, but sometimes, he does get that one. The up smash than coming not, in. You don't get those, but sometimes <laughs> you don't need those. Actually, wasn't it in this matchup yes. exactly that when I had that clip yes. happen? Oh, my God. That was so funny. Hey, listen, I learned better. 
I'm not counting till day out until I see enough wind screens from the other players. Oh, that frame trap is I, so disgusting, dude. All I'm seeing is a whole lot of bird winning right now. Yeah, look at this. Just break this down one more time. Fades out, catches the down air. Now you have to, you have to air dodge, and Fast you have to, it and, and then gets covered. Smash. And even if he air dodges to the left. Till they can still at worst cover it with like a dash attack or maybe a run up down tip before you can snap ledge. So that whole situation is so scary because you're forced to air dodge there and that was perfectly executed by Tilde who's taking a very deep breath right now. He's got to zen himself because you know that that game one could have just as easily fallen into favor of Chris. Mm -hmm. It could have just fallen by the wayside in spite of it being almost all Tilde's. Game two is bringing us to Hollow Bastion, so now it's a little bit more space to play with, but it's also a larger platform yep. that you have to worry about. So you don't get you don't get to force that ledge trap as free, but you do have that combo game you're talking about before and the ability to camp under it. Uh, this is actually going to work out pretty well for Falco in some regards because he gets to get these big strings here without worrying about the ledge trap pressure from PK Chris. Even though this is PK Chris's counterpick, so in your mind, what's the big part of why he decided to go here compared to the Smashville? You get more airspace. Mm -hmm. The stage being a bit bigger and more vertically oriented when it comes to how the stage is positioned does give you a lot of opportunity to play in the air. And while Falco's got the hops to dominate in that airspeed, if Tilde doesn't have the true confirm into combos, or if Chris has perfect DI or SDI, which he has showcased in the past, all of a sudden, you could see a fatal reversal. Absolutely. Trying to find a PK for a flash on the platform because he's expecting maybe a down air there from Tilde. Not going to work, though, and does not get through. Ooh. Yeah, that's the third jump. That jump getting caught right there. The up tilt. Where's he going? Forces to reflect. He's got to go low. What does he do about the ledge trap? And he gets a couple down airs. Does not get the spike he's looking for, though. Not even in a position to do anything with the sour and too. Like, you're just sort of bouncing around. But you're building a lot of damage. Yeah, keep that damage up. Keep it consistent. Make sure that you don't let PK Chris find it in air to air like he was looking for there. Trying to find the forwarder. Beats him out with the back air though. And let's see how PK Chris can adjust. Because so far, PK Chris hasn't really gotten. All right now he is. Now he's starting to get those air to airs I was actually just alluding to. But after that, it kind of faded out until they pump in the brakes once again. That's where you can see he's definitely recognizing the matchup is starting to go away from him. At the same time, it's it's reached a very odd screeching halt between these two because you know they both want to just go off so badly. They want that one hit to fly into a lot of damage. But Tilde has consistently drifted out of PK Fire and put out the reflector to make sure that Chris can't find a follow-up. And that's such a good reaction to have on deck. 100%. Oh my goodness. <laughs> look, look at the way Tilde just kind of pump, like parking over in the corner. Like, look, I know you want to throw me. And you're looking for it right now. Gets his own throw. Gets a couple up airs. No reason to go for the drag down there. It's a little bit too high percent. You do finally take the back here. You got 58% uh, out of it. It's on PK Chris. He needs to cap. Frank, he has to capitalize, Vic. He needs the win here on ledge. Yes, but, you know, Tilde's got a say in the matter. And he's making sure he does not take a lot of damage out of a lot of these interactions. Putting out a lot of spot dodges, drifting away a lot. He's guaranteeing that Ness can't keep up with him. Ness just doesn't have the speed. And with PK Fire oh. being an almost negligent tool here, it's going to be even more difficult for Chris to come back now because that air dodge just put him in a fatal position. Yeah, that buffer air dodge is a little unfortunate. After that multi-hit from the forward air, probably expecting the last one to come through and then having the buffer air dodge in. But that cost him a stock here, and that's huge because we've seen PK Chris's advantage has not been as good as Tilde's. Tilde only needs to get one good hit, and then boom, he keeps you going. But for Ness, he has to work multiple times on getting that hit, and it hasn't been working for him so far. Tilde's keeping such a clean distance. And it's so specific to the little stepping back and forth is to guarantee that he stays out of the burst range of Ness. He doesn't have to worry about PK fire. You're far away from forward air. Mm -hmm. like, what's Chris gonna threaten you with? PK thunder that has to start vertically anyways? Realistically speaking, Chris doesn't have options right now unless he holds forward, and that's exactly what Tilde wants. Exactly, as he continues to look for him, tries to find that forward air, gets a little bit of heal, not really that much though. Now he's got to do a potential down to that ledge. Jump reef back air incoming. No, no, actually, oh, okay, all right. I said it wasn't BM before, but now he's just kind of like, now he's floating on. Granted, it's still, it's the, it's the idea of you move forward to stutter and get Chris to jump so he can find that back air he's looking for. He's just waiting for his opportunity because he knows if he missteps, even with fantastic DI, you're gone. And now, once again, we're in a position where if Chris finds the hit that matters, he could turn all of this around. 
Tilde needs to find that kill shot soon. Yeah, all he needs is, like, Tilde just needs that one up tilt, pulls this out, or just one good jump read once again, or even an anti air up smash, because he's been jumping a lot in front of him. But PK Chris, if he can find a tech chase and get a jab lock, he won't because he died. Just um, call him out. Kick that poor kid in the face. <laughs> that, it's a big not face. Not once, but twice. That is a massive face. Get him out of here. That is, that is, look, look at the child. I'm just saying, I'd be scared. Uh, like, Ness in public, running around with a bat like that, on the other direction. <laughs> right now, two games up. It's Tilde here in this match, uh, continuously pressing him. Look at that. Look at that range. That's like, bro, why though? <laughs> he actually has like. <laughs> why is my head so damn big? <laughs> oh, shout out to Sen. I just noticed Sen in the chat. Unfortunately, showing up as a as a Ness is disappearing in front of our very eyes. Look, you look will be hearing about this one for sure. Oh my goodness. So what? Do we see? Look That's at the shield pole. Oh, yeah, that. Wait. Was he trying to parry, maybe? No, yeah, that was the shield pole. Bruh. He got, he got the goofy shoes. Take, take the hat off or something. I don't know. He got the Disney Tims unlocked. Bruh, bruh take sure a poke through the shield. Bruh, somebody pr bring this kid to the barbershop. He needs to trim a little bit off the top. <laughs> give, him, yo, give, give, him, give him the bald fade. He, he needs it. Because that, that just shaved the top of his head. You see, you get. Oh man, you can see it in the body language. You can see it in the body language right now. He was drifting over Sora. He was thinking about picking off of Ness. In his own words, he'll play well with the character if he's having fun. And AJ, I don't think Tilde's let him have no fun. I don't think so either. Tilde is about business right now. He's got money on the uh, on the eyes on the prize. He's got his eyes on the prize. There I can't. You go. I can't. <laughs> I'm done, man. <laughs> Much like PK Chris, momentarily, if he does not figure something out as he goes in with the down air cancel, immediately trying to pressure. But Tilde has been playing the ground game so well. As he reads him out of disadvantage once again, he has not been able to find anything on a hit while he's trying to touch the ground. It's just really hard for him to find his typical starters because, till, like I said earlier, Tilde's keeping a distance that's too far for forward air. Psy Magnet has only kept Chris safe from lasers. It has not acted as an approaching option like it typically does for him. And you aren't seeing any other aerials hold any weight over Tilde. He's playing this matchup so freely. He's breaking it down properly. And he's he's basically said to Chris, I won't let you beat me in the air. You have to beat me on the ground. You have to find these dash attacks. You have to find these down tilts. And right now, PK Chris actually getting a few hits from this PK Flash and then punishes him finally for a Phantasm to come in. Gets a lead, however possibly short. It depends on if he can avoid this ledge trap. Seeing how far he can extend this lead is actually going to be a big deal. And I may have spoken too soon as... Oh, he does find the contact on the stage to slide back up. Actually making... Just getting it, but it's not going to last... Never mind, it's going to last a little bit longer. Gets the back air as PK Chris floating his way back down to the ledge. Tilde, going to be looking for maybe a jump read forward air? Yeah. I know... I know. I hated <laughs> everything about that interaction. From Chris knowing the forward air was coming, to putting out PK fire, to absorbing the reflected PK fire. That was gross, dude. Oh, next level, but that down tilt is going to catch him jumping above the ledge. Eventually, that's going to find its mark. Only 47% here on Tilde. That's one good Falco string away from an even game. True, but it is worth noting that that's damage that was built up from Chris having that even stock. Now, he built that up while being an advantage. If he can make stocks go like that, He's looking kind of good right now. He's got a, the big thing right now. Like we said, reward on hit. He needs good advantage state control because it hasn't been as strong as the sets have gone on. Granted, here in the game three, he's been getting hits. But Tilde, every time, he does not drop his confirms. He went for jump read forward air last time. Roll read this time. No, he actually goes for jump read forward air again. He's, he's just letting him know. I'm not letting you go airborne on me. He can't afford to give up that airspace because as well as Chris is doing to fight on the ground. They've been very messy fights for both players. Even when Tilde is in very definitive control, he's taking a lot of hits from Chris. So he can't afford to allow that airspace to be the same bloody battle. Exactly. I mean, this is, like, personally, I prefer the air, right? But that's exactly what Ness wants. Ness loves being in the air. As we find him going deep off stage, look, oh, really good wall jump up air. That was really smart, reversing that ledge trap. Now we're at throw ranges, and he gets the dash attack. Looks like Tilted Mabel's looking for a drop, like, like trying to go for parry on the last hit. But now you got to play super safe. Don't let this lead disappear. You have to capitalize on this while you can. Otherwise, Tilted's going to close this out very, very shortly. This has been a fantastic adaptation, and Chris is executing a new plan flawlessly. Tilde is keeping up with the pace, though, so oh. it's a very dangerous situation. Oh! 
Okay. He All saved right. Him. This man is reckless. He tried to go for the big read BK Thunder 2. He does not get it and holds down there that time that pushes him back. Bruh, what are you swinging at? He would have got it. He would have looked like a king. Actually, if you know he what? If it. he did side B there, okay, he was looking for a side B. That makes a little more sense. Try because we are in side B windows. Not anymore though. PK fire what? hits the mark, hits the back air, and PK Chris ain't out of it just yet. I need I need your help. I need your help here. I need help, bro. I need you to help me find where T Tilde was DIing. Uh, let's take let's take a close here, all right? Let's take a close look here. So uh, if you see that arrow and you see it pointing that way, I'll have you know that's not how you survive, bro. You In know, in fact, PK Chris loves to see that angle because that's where he's trying to send you, and you're not doing anything to help yourself except bring yourself into game four. And the way that Chris was playing there. We might even see game five. I'm so mad that after all these years my math teachers were right. I said, I'm never going to use a protractor ever again. And yet we're using it to cover angles here on the DI that was looking kind of sus. Here we go. Going into game number four here. Running it back to Smashville. No extra space to work with at the Hollow Bastion until they's going to go back to where he was able to dominate those first few games. However, this is a bit different of a dynamic. Tilde dominated in these opening games. Here, Chris is putting the pieces together to figure out the counterplay. And because he's changed so many aspects of how he typically approaches this matchup, I can't say for certain if Tilde is gonna have that dominating of a presence in this game. I, like, the biggest thing here is, can PK Chris hold advantage the same way he did before? That's, uh, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no, because Tilde is gonna find him off stage with that down air, already capitalizing on a very early stop. Just gonna do what you can to make this be an offstage battle. That's why Smashville worked as a stage so well for Tilde earlier. Yeah, and that's the thing. We talked about the shortest range to cover to get a ledge trap. You want to be able to force PK Chris at ledge. Because we talked about at the very beginning how Ness is going to be the one that wants to force Tilde off stage consistently to get those free recovery punishes. It actually hasn't been the case. It's been Tilde majority of the time. Let's see what he can get. Maybe a down smash at the ledge. No, trying to read a jump from him. A lot of free grabs at the uh, ledge, but not really in a... Oh, you're going to go to the other side? Yeah, okay, you're cool. You got it. <laughs> All right, you land yourself on stage. Look at Hulk kind of cool. stupid. Get going. I mean, it looked, great. Joke. It could look great for a second and then accidentally, <laughs> accidentally forgot how to drive the car. Gets It just crashes right on the stage. Now, I mean, he's still got a pretty solid lead here, but... PK Chris struggling to get back to stage. Will he down her again? No, tries to go for a down smash and just empty jumps in front of him a few times when he's trying to bait out a spot dodge. Like Chris still has a lot of work ahead of him. He's got to pick up the pieces to even up this game further. And he doesn't have the ground space to find the combos to get that started. Consistently, Tilde has proven dominance at the ledge here. Although right now, he's not finding the kills. No, he's actually, he's having a little bit of a hard time finding the kills. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, does it have a hard time finding that down smash at the ledge? And now he has a massive lead here. Compared to the last game, we saw PK Chris keeping it even. But now he's taking all of this. Gets the frame trap. Uh, but he actually fades away. Still 860% for it, though. Yeah, there's... It's a lot of work that Chris has got to put in to try and pick this up, and Tilde is not letting go of the lead that he has. Doing a fantastic job of building up the damage while cementing the stage control, trading with the down air. It's a 3-1 victory for NPT's Tilde. PK Chris falls at fifth. You Enjoy know, his Long Island brethren. Down air is a great move. Not exactly the easiest move to hit in the world, but when you got a big old target like that, it'll go ahead and find the mark. I love making fun of Ness. That character, massive hitbox on the top part of his body, catching him not only on the first stock, but on the last stock, as we saw in the, uh, the follow-up ones too. PK Chris had some very solid edge guards. This time though, he got given a gift because once again, he went for it, caught the wrong angle, looking a little silly, my friend, but looking silly as well as PK Chris trying to jump from the ledge all those times, and Tilde just capitalizing on it pretty much every stock. Like, I'm not gonna lie, in that game four, Tilde played a little messy, but he made sure that when he had the lead, he held on to it for dear life. So even if he was taking hits from Chris, even with he was whiffing a lot of the punishes, he still made sure to continue to press onwards. He did not let go of his opportunity to take this game because he knew if that mm -hmm. went into a game five, there was a very real possibility of Chris adapting to the point where he could take the set. Tilde and loser's side could not afford that. And Absolutely. now he's on route to fight Adamesk. He's climbing back into that position where victory in this entire tournament is right within his grasp. Like we 